Hallelujah. Go over there. Go over there. Let's look at it. Go to Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter number 12. Somebody say, where are we going? We'll find out together. <laughs> we'll find out together. Hebrews chapter 12. You know, we referred to verse 1 and 2 there, laying aside every weight and running our race. And then he said, uh, verse 5, You've forgotten the exhortation speaks unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. You know, the seeker-sensitive people today, they don't believe God would ever rebuke anybody. I don't know if you know what I mean by seeker-sensitive. The Bible preaches grace real strong, but not like some of the people are preaching it today. Uh, and uh, mercy. The Bible preaches mercy real strong. But, you know, uh, if you just don't want to be right, you're a Christian, but you just don't want to respond to God's Spirit. Well, that, the God can't just bless you or me in that kind of disobedience. He'd be blessing disobedience. And then, what good would it be to, you know, serve Him? The rest of us serving Him, you know, and, and God's blessing them just as much as He's blessing us. What's the use of serving God? You know? So, but, um, but here He said, uh, you know, he, the Lord loves. Well, in fact, we read verse number uh, 5. You've forgotten the exhortation that speaks unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of Him. There are times God will deal with you real straight. Anybody ever had a mom or a dad dealt with you real straight? Probably almost everybody in here, and that's why you're here. Because they didn't leave you to your own devices. And because the atmosphere in your home was such that, you know, it just any old thing wasn't allowed. So therefore, the, the atmosphere was in a kind of atmosphere where God could reach you. I really feel sorry for people that don't get correction. <clears throat> Children, you know what I mean? Don't get correction. Because they just think they can do any old thing they want, and they end up right looking down the, 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 the barrel of a police gun, you know. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I mean, they just, they just act out until somebody has to deal with them, or else they're going to hurt somebody, you know. They're going to kill somebody or something. Amen. And a lot of that's because they didn't get corrected. They, no didn't mean no, and yes didn't mean yes. And you know what I'm talking about. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, uh, you know, we, we probably all had moms, dads like that because somebody dealt with us. And so he goes on, verse 6, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens. You know, uh, the word chasten in many other translations is, is uh, interpreted or uh, translated correct, corrects. Whom the Lord loves, he corrects. You go down the road driving, you've got to constantly make little adjustments or else you're going to get off and have an accident. And that's, what, that's what God does for us. He, he keeps us, He keeps dealing with us. If, if I go for a period of time and don't get corrected, I'm, I'm, I usually say, okay, God, <laughs> I know I'm not all that in the bag of chips. Help me out here. Amen. Amen. So whom the Lord loves, He corrects. In other words, this correction is a uh, flow of love. For God's love for us. It's the flow of God's love towards us. Hallelujah. Whom the Lord loves, He corrects and scourges every son whom He receiveth. If you endure, you and I endure chastening or correction, God deals with you, deals with me, as, with, as, 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 as if we're sons. I want to be a son, don't you? I mean, yeah, legally I am a son because I'm, I'm, born, I'm born again, born of the Spirit, you understand? But you and I can go through life just acting like we're not. You know, being a child means submitting to parents. Doesn't it? Whenever parents uh, give the rules of the house, being a child means you follow those rules or there's punishment, at least in a, in a good home. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor that's the kind of home we're raising our kids in. Praise God. <clears throat> so, uh, but he said here, if, if, we, if we receive this in verse number 7, God's able to deal with us as with sons. For whom, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Every one of us got uh, corrected growing up. But if you be without chastisement or out, without correction, 
The Bible said, Whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. Whoa. Whoa, I don't want to be that. Amen. Now, I was thinking about this uh, actually a couple weeks ago. Didn't even think about it again until right now. Bastards and not sons. You know, ba- that, that word's kind of a slang word today. It used to actually mean something different than today. Uh, you know, basically it meant a, a child born out of marriage, uh, a, a illegitimate child. And you know as well as I do that um, a child born out of marriage doesn't get taken care of. Now, sometimes there's laws today, you understand, that, that has changed some of this. But a child born out of marriage, in the, in the used to be that they didn't get taken care of near like the children in the home. You understand? They didn't, they didn't have the benefits. They didn't get the, the love and care of the father. You know, they just, well, you know, I just act like they're not in existence. It's a terrible thing. It shouldn't be that way. You know, but, but we can all understand why it is that way. Amen. But anyway, so, but what he's saying here is if, if we want to be outside the home, God's family where he's taken care of us, then, uh, then and not receive the correction that we need, then we can, is what he's saying. You, we, you and I don't have to listen to God. We can choose. God gives us, he, he makes us free moral age. We can choose to listen to him, or we choose not to listen to him. But then, of course, our choices determine whether or not he can help us. You know, we'll have to, we'll have to uh, you know, pay the consequences. <laughs> Isn't that right? See, we are children, but he's saying you and I could live as if we're an illegitimate son just outside the house where there's not a father taking care of us. You can see what he's saying. And so there's a place where God's care and keeping is, is surrounding us and His instruction is surrounding us, and it keeps us from a lot of the things other people have to go through. Well, there's just nobody there to take care of them. I want, I want God to take I want God to be, uh, He is my spiritual Father, but yet, right, I, I want Him to have, I want that role to be active in my life. Don't you? I, I know you do. So he said there, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth us and scourge every son whom, son whom he received. If we would endure chastening, God deals with us as with sons. Hallelujah. There's times that the children just need to buck up and say, yes, Daddy, yes, Mommy. And that's the way we got to do with God sometimes. We just got to say, yes, Dad. Yes, or, you know, we don't, we don't call him Dad because we reverence him more than that. But you know what I mean. Yes, Father. Yes. Ouch. 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 Ah, that's hard, but, it, but it's, I know you're right. Amen. Somebody, one of the parents here, uh, recent, uh, recent was telling me about one of their children. They, they, uh, you know, have like all the rest of us growing up. They had to learn to to deal with anger. You know, Amen. Amen. And I've been watching them. They, they they do it right. They get they they get they get control of that. Yeah. Do what they got to do to get control of that. Because you know as well as I do, that can lead to uh, you can get angry. And before you know it, you're out of your head doing things that you never even imagined you would do. And, oh, it, 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 co- it, it costs. I remember Rhema, uh, during, actually, I guess it was after graduation from Rhema. I remember there was a, over by, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, over by ORU, there was a hill. Right before you come down, was that 81st? I believe it was 81st Street. You come down 81st Street, and you come up to this kind of an unusual, seems like kind of an out-of-place hill. You know, it's a lot, a lot of flat land out there. And you come up to this hill, it kind of, kind of goes up like this, and then it goes back down. And as soon as you go back down right over there is the whole ORU campus. You know, every, you can see it all. It's kind of neat coming up, and then you see it. But, but the problem was, for some stupid reason, they put a stoplight right on top of that hill. I mean, you got to go up there, and you just... You got to stop, and you know how it is stopping whenever, you know, most cars that are automatic nowadays, they'll pretty much hold you there, but, you know, stick shifts. Oh, my goodness. You get up there, you got the brake, you got your foot on the brake, you got it in first gear, and you got the other foot on the gas, and you got to, uh, you got to start gassing before you let off the brake, you know. And it was, a, it was not fun getting caught in that stoplight. A lot of us ran that stoplight. You know, well, it's, it's, it's kind of pinkish, but, you know, we're going. <laughs> you know, red and yellow, you get it? Kind of. But so, anyway, I'll never forget it. So it wasn't a fun hill, but I'll never forget it. I saw a news report in the newspaper, the Tulsa World, one day, 
that uh, somebody had come up to that hill, you know, and, of course, the light's red, and so they stopped, and then there's line, cars lining up behind them, you know. And somebody, some lady, I'm not picking on the ladies, I'm just I'm telling the story, um, but some lady had sat there and couldn't get going again and, you know, was falling, coming back towards the other car, and the guy behind her got so mad, got angry, got out of the car, uh, went to grab her door to pull it open. I don't know what he's going to do to her. But she saw him coming and locked the door. And he grabbed, and of course, you know, the, other, the cars from the other direction are coming. He grabbed that door handle and tried to push in the button and tried to jerk her door, but he lost his balance, fell back, and a car ran right over him, killed him. Killed him. Graveyard dead. Why? Got angry. Out of control. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know why I told that story, but it's just all good. When the Lord corrects you about your anger, just like mom and dad, I, I had to be dealt with, you know, as a kid. You get mad. I remember distinctly telling them, when I get to such and such an age, I'm leaving, I'm never coming back. You ever said that? I remember at 12 years old, got on my bike, rode up to the corner of the farm where the studs, there's a gravel, I mean, a, a blacktop road. I got on the blacktop road. I'm leaving. I'm out of here, 12 years old. I don't know where I was going. <laughs> got on my bike, went to the corner of that, th there was a, you know, up by the main road, the blacktop road where our driveway came off. I got on, and I went up to the corner where the mailbox was. That's about as far as I got, and I started, I looked, where am I going? I was familiar with going to the mailbox because I'd go get the mail. <laughs> but from there on, it's like, where am I going? Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess an angel went, bonk, dummy. Yeah. I turned around and came back home. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we got to be corrected on things sometimes, just like parents correct a child. you got to be corrected. And it's not for because he's angry. It's because he loves you. Do you see that? Whom the Lord loves, he corrects and scourges every son whom he receives. That means he gives them a whooping. <laughs> Secret sensitive churches don't tell you God will give you a whooping. He does it with his word. He does it with his word. Hallelujah. Well, it's all in the Bible. I don't know if you like these verses, but they're all in here. And he said in verse 7 again, if you endure chastening or correction, God deals with you as with sons. I want to be in the house. I want all the benefits of being in the house. Hallelujah. And uh, for whom, his, which son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Verse 8, he that is without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then, if, we, if, we, if we're without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are we bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. That's another word for respect. How many of you know children are to honor their parents? Amen. I know children sometimes, they get the idea my parents are mean. They don't understand. No, we do understand. We've been there. <laughs> Amen. It's you that doesn't understand. Amen. We've had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. It's interesting whenever they grow up and become parents, and all of a sudden they understand. Yeah, and between 20 and 29, you know, yeah. mom and dad, man, they're smart. They, they, they were dumb whenever I was a teenager, but boy, have they gotten smart. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, uh, verse 8, can we get through this? I'm trying to get through this. If you be without chastisement, wherever all partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we've had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence or respect. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? Hallelujah. Amen. So there's, there's life in receiving correction. Tell your neighbor there's life in receiving correction. Praise God. Be in subjection to the Father of spirits and lives, live. He, God didn't, uh, well, originally He did by creating Adam, but our parents gave us our body. They're our parents physically, but God's the, par the parent or the father of our spirit. So that's where he deals with us. 
He deals with us in our spirit. You ever had a, a sword of conviction go through your spirit? Where, oh, ah, oh, Lord, forgive me. Forgive. You ever had that happen to you? If you ain't, you ain't probably living for God. You're probably in rebellion or something. <clears throat> you, ought to, you and I ought to keep a real tender conscience. I mean, God just whispers, sounds like he's speaking through a megaphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. So we, we be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live. For they, for their physical parents, verily for a few days chastened us or corrected us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous. That's why there's not a lot of shouting going on this morning. It's just. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What did he preach on? Correction. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo, ha, ha, woo -hoo. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how many people come out the line tonight, today and say, that's a good sermon, Pastor. <laughs> not that I need it for my anything, but you know what I'm talking about. No chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards, say afterwards. afterwards. My mama taught me the value of delayed gratification. I don't know if you know what I mean by that, but she taught me, you, you do the right thing now, it'll pay off later. Yes. Do the right thing now, it'll pay off later. Yes. Amen. Rather than just trying to get all my gratification, in other words, what the flesh wants to do right now, and then have to pay that bill later. Amen. No chastening for the present seems to be. It's, it's, it's sometimes when God's really dealing with us, working us over on something. At the time, it's like, Lord, just let up a little bit. You know? But see, really, he's trying to get us into position for something he wants to do for us. So if we'll make sure and just crucify the flesh, when, and when the flesh is saying, ouch, Amen. Somebody said, who are you preaching to? I have no clue. I'm just taking it from me. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just acting like it's got to be me today, Lord. <clears throat> seems to be joy. No, no chastening for the present seems to be. En nobody enjoys it. That's another way to say it. But it's grievous. There's times we need to be grieved. I don't mean grieve the Holy Ghost. I mean, ouch. I don't like that. <laughs> There's, we need, there's some things we need that we don't like. Well, now, that's just going out and works and religion, Pastor. Well, he said it right here. I thought this is New Testament. Look like, look like that's New Testament. Should we go back a few pages and see if it says New or Old Testament? That's New Testament. Whew, Lord, if you get me out of this, we'll be great. Maybe I can go to Nigeria tomorrow. Maybe the... Maybe this afternoon, you know. Um, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous. Nobody enjoys it at the time. In other words, the flesh doesn't. The flesh doesn't enjoy it, but grievous. It's the flesh. The flesh is hurting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good when your flesh is hurting. Amen, because God's getting out the old scrub brush and cleaning stuff out. Hallelujah. I was a kid. I never liked my mom make you know get me a bath. And I was real young. She gave me my own. She gave me my bath. But I never liked that. But boy, it sure felt good to be squeaky clean afterwards. <laughs> you know, you can go like that and hear the squeak. You know, you see. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. God will give you a word bath sometimes. He'll say, He'll say, Come in here. You stink. <laughs> that attitude stinks. Come in here, and he'll get the word out, wash you with the water of the word, and you're going, ouch, you know how you do when you're a kid. Damn, stop it. Hey, mommy, I don't you. <laughs> you're spitting soap, and, and you get out, and you're all happy about the fact you got a bath. How many of you know we're all more pleasant to be around whenever we've had a spiritual bath? Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I love coming to Spirit of Faith Family Church. <laughs> I love coming to Spirit of Faith. Woo, yeah. So, 
No chastening for the present seems to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, circle afterward. Amen. I almost want you to circle it and write after, write, write a little line down to the margin and write after W-O-R-D. After the word, correct. After the word corrects you. After the word corrects me. Woo! There's an after the word blessing. Afterward. Not before. It's after. 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 Tell your neighbor after is always good when it's been the word. That, that, that some th th good things follow after the word. <clears throat> good things follow after the scrub brush of the word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If I hadn't learned to take a bath, Mom hadn't taught me to take a bath. Because, you know, when we were kids, we took a bath once a week whether we needed it or not. We grew up on the farm. <laughs> That's the way I grew up. Yeah. I still have relatives that take one about every four days. You can tell it when you get around them. You know. <laughs> That's the way it was when I was growing up. Yeah. I mean, you know, we didn't always need it after a week, but we... Have you figured out that our bodies are in a fallen condition yet? Yes. You don't watch it every 24 hours, it stinks. Well, anyway, I don't know why I said that. That's <laughs> but what I was getting ready to say was, if my mom hadn't alert, taught me to take a bath, and, and uh, you know, as I grew up, I started doing it every day. Praise the Lord. Because on the farm, you need it. Usually twice a day you need it. <laughs> But anyway, if she hadn't taught me to take a bath, that when Pastor Debbie came around, she'd have smelled me and said, No way, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, he's good looking, but boy, he stinks. <laughs> you know? <laughs> anyway, we digress. Helps the medicine go down, doesn't it? To have a little, little laugh and fun. No chastening, for verse 11. I'm trying to get through this passage. I got, two, I got three other sermons up here that I wanted to preach this morning. <laughs> recognizing fear. You see that? I want you to know how to recognize fear. <laughs> verse 11. No, ch no uh, chastening for the present seems to be joyous. The flesh doesn't like it, but grievous. Nevertheless, after the word, afterwards, after we're corrected with the word, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them that are exercised thereby. Now, that's a lot of King James Elizabethan English. <laughs> uh, it just simply, you can say it this way, it, it pays off in a harvest. Fruit means harvest. You know, whenever you bear fruit. I just picked the apples off the apple trees. I, that was only one produced this year, but out in my ranch, that's fruit. You know, that's harvest. It's harvest time. Yeah. I pulled them a little early because the coons got them last year, and I didn't want a coon getting my apples this year. <laughs> Those are my apples. Yeah. But he's saying it'll pay off. Harvest will come. The harvest off of, notice he said, the fruit of righteousness. That means the harvest off of righteousness. In this context, he's not talking about the righteousness you got in the new birth. He's talking about the righteousness that you got by correcting and, and stop going the wrong way and start going the right way, the righteous way. Righteous means right. Right. Righteousness means different things in different places in the Bible. Amen. Uh, so he said, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. In other words, the harvest off of doing the right thing will come unto them that are exercised thereby. The Amplified says those who are trained by it. Trained by what? The correction. You know, you can be corrected and not learn anything. Just go out and keep on. Amen. Just keep on going our own way, you know. But here he's talking about learning from what God dealt with us about. Correcting ourselves and, uh, and uh, in exercising ourselves and training ourselves to walk in the light of what he said. Everybody still like this sermon? 
And so when he says exercise yourself, in other words, that means practice it. Practice it. Practice what he dealt with you about. If it has to do with, you know, being critical or unforgiving, uh, practice catching yourself. Yes. Amen. we got a good testimony that we're going to be able to share with you soon about somebody, oh, God took good care of them and dealt with them, and they corrected, and bam, the blessings that came, and almost instant blessings. Yes. Amen. I look forward to, be, you know, you being able to hear it. But, see, that's not a, that, that, that's not a looking down on anybody else. We've all been there. Yes. We've all been there. Yes. I've had the Lord deal with me, and I go, ouch, ouch. My flesh didn't like it. Amen. I was squirming. My flesh was squirming. Anybody ever been there? When God's dealing with you and your spirit's gone, oh, yeah, thank you, Lord. Your, your spirit loves it, honestly. Your spirit loves to be right because you've been made right in, in the image of God. You're, you're in His nature in righteousness. You have that nature of righteousness, and your spirit wants to be right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 I don't know. I don't. I hate to embarrass them, but their testimony is so good. It's not embarrassing to them. It's a wonderful testimony to them. But uh, Don and Eric, <laughs> you thought I was going to pick on you. They have been. God has been doing some things in their lives financially. But they. What? What? God and God keeps working them over. I know what they're talking. They sent me another testament the other day. God keeps working them over about this and this and this. And they're like, okay, all right, yes, we'll, we'll make that adjustment, you know. And, and, and God keeps doing things. You, I'm amazed at how quickly God started doing things Amen. just because they started making the little adjustments. Amen. How about if maybe we start listening and, and, and maybe it become obvious that, that God's doing something for us too. Amen. Rather than no testimony for the last 17 years. The Word works. Tell your neighbor, the Word works. The Word works. Hallelujah. I mean, they're having to run. To, she just emailed me again the other day. They're having to run to keep up. And it wasn't working. Tell your neighbor, I'll tell you what. That's, you need to hear their testimony. You need to go ask them their testimony. Amen. Amen. It was obvious some things weren't working. But as soon as they made the adjustments, it was obvious. All of a sudden, now grace kicked in. It's there all the time. One of the things she quoted in her email, I liked it. She said, uh, another minister that she was uh, listening to said, whenever grace is uh, working in your life, it's obvious. It's obvious. Amen. It ought to be obvious. I said it ought to be obvious because we're getting the harvest off of making the adjustment. You see what he's talking about here? Verse number 11, getting the harvest. Hallelujah. Be, you ought to be running to keep up. Well, I'm not there, Pastor. Well, maybe all of us aren't there to like it could be. So let's just keep on making these adjustments. What do you say? Let's keep a tender, clear conscience. Let's put our foot to it whenever we don't like something that God's dealing with us about. And maybe He's using somebody else to deal with. He's using somebody else to speak through us. I've had God speak through my wife. It made me so mad that He used her. <laughs> I'm just being honest. At least I'm honest. You're not, you know, you're laughing. <laughs> you're not being honest, but it's true about you too. <laughs> and you wives. God spoke through your husband. Well, bless God, my... My wife can't tell me anything. I'm the head of the house. Man, you you keep saying, you keep saying you're you want your marriage to be like Abraham and Sarah, like the Bible said. You know, follow Abraham and Sarah. And one time God spoke to Sarah, and Abraham said, "What about that God?" And God said, "Listen to her." You ever read that? Remember about kicking Ishmael out? God spoke to the wife, and the wife told the husband, and the husband and God and the husband went to God and said, "Hey, I'm the big Kahuna. What are you talking to her for?" And, and God said, "Listen to her." What? That's not right. That's not Bible. Well, the, Abraham and Sarah are the only two people in the Bible, in the New Testament, that we're to pattern our marriages after. First Peter chapter number 3, it talks about Abraham and Sarah. It never said Pastor Jay and Pastor Debbie. I'm endeavoring to be a good example, but it didn't say that. I might mislead you. 
doing the best I can. Yeah. Why are y'all looking at me like that? Yeah. Abraham and Sarah, the only two examples in the Bible. Yeah. Of course, Jesus and the church, you understand. But, I'm, but, but that's, I'm talking about human beings, the only two human beings. You know, tell your neighbor, I'm, I'm smart, I know what he's saying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You ever had the Lord speak through somebody else, made you mad because, you know, well, who they think they are telling me when, what God's saying to me? Well, bless God because you weren't listening, that's why. Well, all right, so verse 11. Uh, maybe we ought to read this one again. This is so rich here. Now, no chastening, no correction for the present. I like that word present. How many of you know these seasons aren't forever? I'm glad the rest of my life God's not saying, you did that wrong, you did that wrong. How many of you know you, you can't live that way? That's not a marriage, and that's not a relationship with God or nothing. There's a lot of space of time. He's, he's encouraging, he's edifying, he's building us up and, and telling us a good job and telling us you were faithful, you were obedient, so forth and so on. But every now and then it's like, hey, hey, isn't that right? Aren't you glad that's not forever, it's just a season? Yeah, amen, praise God. You know, raising children, it's not, it's not all correct, 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 correct. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of encouragement. You know, training, I mean, uh, correction without training is not fair. It is not fair. You know, the Bible said don't provoke your children to wrath. If you'd have told me I was going to be preaching on this this morning, before I left the house, I'd have said, I, had, I don't think so. <laughs> Amen. What is the difference between training and correction? Training happens before they made the mistake. Correction happens afterwards. So whenever they don't know what's right and wrong and they do something you don't like and you correct them, that's not fair. Isn't that right? Pastor Debbie had to tell, teach me that about our cat. He was like, <laughs> she don't know what you're correcting her for. It was, you were out of the house, and it was six hours ago she poo-pooed in the wrong place, and you come home and correct, she has no idea. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, she's yeah. cat. <laughs> 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 oh, brother. <laughs> Praise God. So whenever this correction takes place, it's something he's been dealing with us about, but we're not listening. He's, he was training us, training us, training us. And so there comes a time that, that seemeth not to be joyous where he'll say, all right, I've been teaching, I've been talking to you about this, and you're not, and so he gets real straight. And honestly, uh, some people don't like that, but I love those times. They're done in such love. They're done in compassion and mercy. They're not done, you realize uh, parents, are taught in Ephesians not to correct their children out of anger. The Bible teaches, uh, you know, parents, uh, you know, especially fathers, you know, not to correct them out of anger. And so uh, God's not that way. He won't, he won't do it out of anger. He'll do it out of he, he's trying to save you from heartache. And it's really a love flow. Amen. But uh, those times can be so precious in God. And uh, they should be. You ought to see his love and compassion in what he's dealing with you about. So no, no chastening for the present. Verse number 11 seems to be joyous. Just for that time it's not enjoyable, but grievous, the flesh, on the flesh. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness, the harvest off of doing the right thing, whenever we uh, allow those corrections to train us. The Amplified says those who have been trained by it. Hallelujah. How many of you see that verse in you've, different than you've ever seen it before? Verse 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands that hang down on the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet and let that which is lame be turned out of the way. Uh, uh, let that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. We already read in verse, uh, is it verse 10 there? That, it might be, that we might be partakers of His holiness. How many of you know holiness is an outworking of the work of the Spirit in our hearts? It's something that God works from the inside out. And so he said, uh, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. 
Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I like that scripture. Don't you like that scripture? Uh, what he's talking about is coming short of the grace of God in verse number 15. He's not saying God takes his grace away from us. It says that we, we come short of receiving it without receiving these corrections. You know, God's always wanting to bless, but, you know, he, he has to have us respond to him. And so, uh, praise, the, praise the Lord. I like the word. Don't you like the word? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, um, I sense what God is really talking about. I believe he's, why he's having us go this way. Some of the things I was sharing in the offering. Is that all right? Praise the Lord. If you took it as uh, an attack, well, um, you didn't hear what God was saying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's finish up talking a little bit more about it. That'd be all right. Go to Romans 8. Romans 8, verse number 35. Romans 8, verse number 35. I guess, you know, I, I, I kept trying to get to my uh, recognizing fear sermon because I, I didn't want to say everything God said to me in the dream last night. Somebody said, was it about me? Nobody in this congregation was in it, so don't, don't go there, all right? <laughs> Did you hear that sigh of relief? Whew. <laughs> he was dealing with me about issues and not even, wasn't even talking about people. He's dealing about issues. Amen. That's the way God is. Romans 8. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We got a little correction in the offering, didn't we? And so we, uh, this passage where it talks about, uh, you know, wow, there's so much to hear. Let's just start in verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? How many of you know you always got to, in these corrective times, you ought to got to remember he's on my side. He's not against me. He's not trying to destroy me. He's not trying to take something from me. He's on my side. If God be for us, who can be against us? Verse 32, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Who, is, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It's Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. You know, correction is not condemnation. We need to learn the difference between conviction of the Spirit and condemning of the condemning of our own heart. The Bible talks about our heart condemning us, but the Holy Spirit never con condemns. He just convicts. Amen. Amen. We need conviction. The conviction of the Spirit will keep you in a safe place. It'll, it's a little like guardrails on the side of a highway. It'll keep you in the middle without going over the, the, over the ditch, you know. Over, you know. It's, a, it's a safety thing. That, keeping a clear conscience will pay off richly in your life. So that's what the Holy Spirit will do. He'll convict you in your own conscience. And so uh, that's what he's talking about there. Who, who shall lay anything to the Who is he that condemneth? It's Christ that died. And that's verse number 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written? For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay or no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even in these times of correction, that we are not separated from the love of God. Those that think that God's being mean and doesn't love them anymore, they don't understand what God's doing. Do you realize that God can deal with us one way and we filter it through our own insecurity or our own thinking or our own criticalness or whatever, and, and, and God... What God actually said, we turn it into something that He did say. I've done it. And so uh, that's what He's talking about here. Don't ever think that while you're being convicted about something, that, that's, that God has left, that His love has left you or something. There's more to love than just gushy Felix. I said, there's more to love than just making us feel good all the time, especially our flesh. 
If you think loving your children means always making them feel good in the flesh, you're going to raise <laughs> troublemakers. There's times where you're not their friend. In fact, you ought to just be the parent all the time. But, you know, people, they want to be friends with their children. Well, no, be the parent. The parent is different than being a friend. I'm not saying don't be close to your children, hug them and everything. I'm, you, you know, I don't have time to say everything that needs to be said, maybe. But, but uh, you know, it's not just all we're friends, like equals, like you're on the same level here. No, I'm your parent. And so even whenever you're correcting your children, my parents told me this. I didn't believe it. But they said, I do this because I love you. How many of you have said that to your children or your mom and dad said it to you? Do this because I love you. Isn't that right? We didn't understand it at the time. We thought love was a funny thing. You know? But see, we didn't know what real love was. Amen. Real love, whom the Lord loves, he chasteneth and corrects. So here he said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, persecution, famine, and nakedness? No, in all these things we're more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No outside force, whether demonic or human, or whether it be circumstances that a person motivated by the devil puts you in, can keep you from being blessed. And the correction of God will keep you in the blessing. It will keep you right in that place. So blaming other people for why we aren't prospering and experiencing the blessing is not God. we got to just go ahead and suck it up and say, Lord, thank you for the correction. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our problem is not, we're finishing up some of the things the Lord said to me. Is that all right? Our problem is not what somebody did to us or didn't do to us. You understand what I mean? That's not what's hindering us. Amen. These outside conditions, in other words. That maybe somebody else's, what they did, seemed to put us in a cir circumstance maybe we didn't like. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's not what really is uh, keeping us uh, from the blessing. Amen. It's really what we allow, the thoughts we allow that come as a result of what they did. The thoughts of, I'm a victim. Amen. Praise God. They are not our problem. Our problem is what we allow in. Our own offense, our own critical spirit. Amen. Praise God. It's what we let the devil get inside because of it. Rather than becoming skilled at recognizing what the devil has been using to trip us up, we have developed the self-defeating, diabolical skill of making excuses. People who are good at making excuses are terrible at making a success out of life. And they're terrible at faith in God. And God will deal with us about that. That's what the offering was. <laughs> Praise God. I'm leaving. Brother Matt, can you go with me? <clears throat> right after this. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. There are too many opportunities set before you by God to get distracted, bitter, and blinded and all hindered and stuck in what somebody else did to you. It just isn't worth it to take the wrong attitude. When God's correcting us, or if somebody's done us wrong, and we're getting offended at it, or we think they've done us wrong, we're getting offended at it, and God corrects us for it, and we get then bitter at God or angry at God, we're just digging our grave. We're just digging a hole. That <laughs> it's, a, it's a trap. Tell your neighbor it's a trap. Whenever uh, God deals with us about these things, we have to just say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I'm not going to get stuck here. Amen? You need to have too much of a drive to succeed to let some little person make you a little person too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just because somebody else is small, don't, don't you get small. They decide... Um, 
that they're not going to get small. In other words, you and I are supposed to decide we're not going to get small because of somebody else's wrong that they did to us if they did do something wrong. Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. Neither human nor demons nor anybody else is big enough to lock you in a situation that God's power isn't able to bust you out of. But not if you keep making excuses. Amen? Making excuses is not how you tap into the power of God. Stop crying over things that have no power to hold you. You're letting the devil in when you sit around feeling sorry for yourself. Well, if they would just do the right thing, I could prosper. Or they would do the right thing, I could, I could, I could move forward in my car. Or if they would recognize me, or if they would put me on the platform, or blah, blah, blah. you know what I'm talking about. Those, those things are not what hold people back. In fact, nobody can hold you back. You know, Joseph had some injustices done to him. His brother sold him, put him in a pit, and then he sold him. And then another man lied about him. You know what I'm talking about? But because he kept his heart right and wouldn't get bitter and wouldn't blame everybody else and become a victim, he became the number two man in the nation. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, um, blind Bartimaeus, the Bible called him blind Bartimaeus in Mark 10. You remember that? How many of you know the reason he was called blind is because that was a tag on his name to identify him. That was an identifier. Not just Bartimaeus. There's probably a lot of Bartimaeus was living in that day. I mean, in that region of the country. But uh, here's a man that's nicknamed, I mean, uh, has a tag, an additional name on his name to identify this Bartimaeus. Right. Who, which Bartimaeus? Oh, we're talking about blind Bartimaeus. Oh, yeah, old, old blind Bartimaeus. He's sitting down there. Yeah. You know, you'd identify. That's an identifier. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. And so whenever, remember, the uh, Bible talks about he threw away his garment when Jesus called him. And that garment, according to the culture, really identified him as well as a blind man. You know, today you see a man with a white cane, maybe that would identify a blind man. Well, in that day they wore a particular beggar's garment that identified uh, uh, him as a blind man and a legitimate beggar. And so uh, whenever Jesus called him, though, he threw away that garment, didn't he? I'm almost done. That coat said, give to me, help me. Amen. In other words, he was dependent on everybody else. That's what that coat said. What are we talking about? Not being dependent, being self-sufficient. I'm talking about back to the offering. <laughs> not, being, not being dependent on other people, keep our faith in God. Now, God will use other people. How many of you know we keep our looking to God, God will move on people. And we receive that, but we're not... You know, acting as if, well, you owed me that. Right. We act as if, praise God, thank you. That's so kind of you to think of me. Yeah. And it was not like, well, I expected you to do that. I mean, you know, I did hear you got a raise on your job, and, you know, you ought to spread it around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way the other people's attitude is. Yeah. Woo, Lord, have mercy. I'm going to go home and examine all this sermon. This is amazing. But that, that garment said, help me, give to me. Uh, in other words, this dependence on other people is what that said. But when he got a revelation, when Jesus said, call the blind man, call him, call him, he threw that garment off. In other words, he really uh, had a revelation of, I don't, I'm, here's, my, here's, here's the end of dependent on other people. Isn't that right? I know it was his healing, it was his healing of his eyes, but he really saw this is the end of me depending on other people. Hallelujah. Blind Bartimaeus had a name that was based on his situation. Whenever he got a revelation, it took the situation identity and threw it away. That's what God was trying to say in the offering, is we need a revelation that he's our supply. We need a revelation that he's our supply. Hallelujah. Is that real to you? It can be more real to us. It can be more real. And so he got revelation identity rather than situation identity. Hallelujah. And he wasn't dependent on other people anymore. He threw that away. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
So let's not let that in our hearts and in our minds. What do you say? Well, you know, I'm blaming everybody else. We got That's in our culture now. One of the, I don't know how long ago it was, I saw somebody went to McDonald's, got coffee, and burnt themselves and sued McDonald's. That, you don't want me to, you don't want me to say what I think of that. That person wasn't raised right. Every time I hear things like that, I, I think, your mama didn't raise you right. Amen. Your mama didn't raise you right. Praise the Lord. But demons will help you in that. Don't make excuses. Tell your neighbor, just, just stop with excuses. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a form of idolatry to give your condition in life the place that belongs to no one but God. Dash, Brother Ike Akabogu. <laughs> Amen. He said that. I like that. I wrote that down. Do you, you get it? There's a form of idolatry. In other words, you're holding this, I'm a victim, I'm a victim. You're holding that up, and you're almost worshiping it whenever God is your source. He's the only one that you should worship. I don't want any idols in my life. So I'm not going to worship at the altar of a victim. I'm a victim, I'm a victim. If the people did this, if people did that. Praise the Lord. Somebody said, well, I thought we're supposed to give to the gospel. Yeah, that's not to me. That's, that's to the church. When it comes to my personal life, though, you know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody still loves pastor, right? Yes. Well, good. Good, 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 good. It'll help you get to heaven. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. We love correction. Tell your neighbor we love correction. Love correction. It's our, it's our, it's, it's a safe place, safe place. Uh, <clears throat> I'm glad I didn't, ra wasn't raised in a home that my parents just let us do whatever. I'm glad that they, they corrected us. I turned out all right. Didn't like it at the time, but you turned out all right. You didn't like it at the time. Hallelujah. This modern day thing, you know, spanking your children's abuse and, you know, you're warping their personality. Well, whatever that was that needed to come out, I do want to warp that. That's, that needs to be warped. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Come on. yeah. I'm not talking about abuse. Yeah. I'm not talking about doing it out of anger. No. But I'm talking about, I've told you over and over again, now it's time for the punishment. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Maybe we should act like Grant Dufresne. Thank you, Mama, for keeping me straight. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for keeping me straight. Thank you for dealing with me when I needed to be dealt with. Let me tell you something. Everybody, everybody put together helping you cannot help you like God can help you. Amen. He can do it in grand style. And here's the thing. When He does it and takes care of you, you know, we get get off of dependent other people thinking they owe this, though, and just get our faith back in God, and just be free, make it, let other people free from our opinions and stuff. When, whenever He takes care, of, everybody's going to recognize. Oh my goodness, how did that happen? We just say God, God moved in my business. God gave me favor on my job. God did something. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Employers like those that serve with joy. We had a lady working. I don't know. I don't, want to, she, I don't know if she'll hear this, but it, even if she does, that's good. It's good about her. Working at the daycare, she hasn't been to the church much. I, she's been here a few times. She's a sweet, she is a sweetheart. I mean, precious. She's had things in her life and in her home life that could have turned her bitter, you know, all angry, and everybody owes me something and all that. But she is as sweet and precious as can be. Amen. And we, we, we enjoy having her. She's a good worker. I think she's still here. But um, I never forget, um, we found out some things about some needs she had financially. And Pastor Debbie and I got tears in her eyes. I'm like, oh, here's a chance. Here's a chance. Here's a chance. And we were able to bless her. Employ employers enjoy <laughs> people that they're just joyful, thankful, grateful. I mean, this young lady, she, I, I don't even hardly, I'd have to, if I saw her in a crowd, I think, I think she's the one, you know, that kind of person. But because she, does, she doesn't come around a lot, but, but she writes us Christmas cards. Thank you for the job you give me at the daycare. And 
what do you want? You know what I'm talking about? Because, you know, you're know, not thinking you owe me something. And you just want to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Father, any adjustments we need to make, we're making them right now. We thank you for dealing with us about it. We thank you for addressing us. It's the flow of your love for us. We receive it in that flow and not another flow. We receive it for our own good. You're endeavoring to bless us and take us into increase and get us into a position where we can handle bigger things. And, oh, Father, the glory that's ahead, the glory that's ahead. I hear the Spirit of God saying, the glory that's ahead, the glory that's ahead will make you weep, but not because others aren't doing the right thing that you think they should do. Make you weep because you're seeing the goodness of your Father. Weep for joy. So thankful that you submitted and surrendered to a loving Heavenly Father. Ha <laughs> ha! The glory that's ahead, the glory that's ahead, the glory that's ahead will far surpass all that you went through to get there. It'll make it all worth it. He'll make it up to you. He richly will give you that which you need and supply you with all that you need because your heart was turned in repentance towards me, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Hallelujah. Like Sister Dawn said, uh, that minister said, it, it should be apparent. Amen. Hallelujah. There's some things that I've been saying, okay, God. Pastor, it's time to quit. I know, but I'm not done yet. There's been things, all right, God. All right. Where is it? Open my eyes to see it. It isn't on your side. I know that. It's on me. Where, where is it? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, and you, 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 <laughs> you tend to brace yourself for whatever's coming, but you're, <laughs> but you're really sincere. You really want to know. Yeah. Anybody want to know? Yes, sir. So whenever you ask, he'll call. You call. He'll he'll answer. Amen. Well, let's receive communion. What do you say? <laughs>